Hey guys, it's Robin, our silent crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today, we are going to make a fabric tray similar to this one. Now, I received this as a gift earlier this year, and it came like this with a pin cushion on the inside with some fun pins in it, and then it had several of these little quilting clips pinned all the way around to the outside. Now, I thought that was a really great idea. We've made the pin cushions and we've made the pin cushions where you can add the clips to it, but to have the two of them separate like this, I thought was really smart. Now we've already made pin cushions, so we're not gonna go ahead and make that. And I actually don't use mine like this. I keep the pin cushions separately. What I like to do is I like to store all of my clips inside this little fabric tray. And that way this stores right underneath this table right here of my sewing machine. I can pull it out as I need it. It's wide enough for me to stick my hand in there. I'm not trying to get into some, I had a little wooden box that I was keeping them in and it was always trying to go like this just to grab one or this way I can easily put my hand in there and grab a whole handful if I need them. So it's a very versatile project. So this is what we're gonna make today. When I asked her what pattern she used, she said she found this at Crafty Gemini here on YouTube. So I went and searched. She has several fabric baskets, but it's not quite like this. I liked how this one kind of wrapped around the pincushion and hugged it, and it has just these little corners. Now the Fabric Gemini shows a few, and they have the ones that have these uh, big corners that stick out like this. And I really wasn't all that fond of those. So I just asked her about this. She said she just put a couple little stitches into these I really can't see. I think she might have hand stitched them. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come up with something similar and figure it out ourselves as we go. Now I did test it out and I did do it in just a little rectangle. I don't have, I believe she used one I just feel in here. It feels like a very heavyweight stabilizer. I don't have any heavyweight stabilizer. And right now it's a little bit difficult to get certain stabilizers. So I thought, well, let's try a few different other things. I went ahead and I stabilized both pieces, my lining and my outer, with just a lightweight to a medium one that I had on hand. And I thought that worked out pretty good for a fabric basket, but as you can see, it's a little bit less sturdy as this basket. So when I put my clips in, it's kind of a little wobbly, especially if I put them all in. If I wanted to go and pick them up, it's easy for the sides or the ends to just kind of pull back and I might just have a, a clip spillage situation going on. If you happen to have any of the heavier weight stabilizer on hand, I suggest testing it out on that if you're interested because I feel like that would give you the nice sturdiness that you're looking for. If you want one that's just a little bit of a catch-all basket, then you can go ahead and stabilize your outer and your lining with just something lightweight or whatever you happen to have on hand. Today we're gonna to go ahead and test it out with batting and see what it looks like. I have my lining fabric, I, want, I just wanted something bright right now. We're coming in with springtime. I thought it'd be really fun to have something bright. And then I have this pastel button fabric that I'm gonna use on the outside. And then I have my cotton batting. So with this fabric, since it already has all these like lines and little mini borders on it, I'm gonna go ahead and do some quilting. I'm just gonna do some straight line quilting. Normally I like to go on the diagonal and that gives it a little bit extra sturdiness to it. So you can cross hatch it. You can just do some really tight lines either way. You can free motion quilt all over it. These are a good little piece to practice our quilting on. So whatever you wanna try, go for it. Cause we just wanna make sure it's dense enough that it's going to give some stability to our project here. We don't wanna just put three or four lines on it and just leave it just as loose and floppy. The more quilting you do, the more dense the quilting, the stiffer your project is gonna be. Now that carries over from doing fabric trays all the way into a quilt. I have cut, for this one I've decided that I took my friends here and I measured it and I kind of went like this and I measured it on the side and I measured it this way and I went this way and it looks like she used probably about a seven or eight inch square of fabric. 
most of the ones I saw in the Crafty Gemini, she was using like a charm square. And we definitely want this, well, at least I want this to be a little bit larger to hold plenty of my little clips. So I thought maybe you guys might want to use it for clips also. You can really put anything you need in here. You can fill it with buttons, little bits of scraps. If you're doing leaders and enders, these are really versatile. You can put anything you want in it. It doesn't even have to be in the craft room. You can put it in your desk with paper clips. So I have an eight inch square of my lining. I have an eight inch square of my outer fabric. Now you can start with a little larger square. If you're going to do some type of quilting that's gonna cause it to draw in and be smaller, then you might wanna go ahead and start with an eight and a half or nine inch square, and then you can trim it up afterwards. And I have my batting is larger than my square just so in case that batting gets sucked in a little bit i'm not going to have spots that don't have batting where other places do now i'm going to start by just following some of these lines and then i'm going to go back in between and add extra i'm thinking for this that maybe i want to have my lines my quilting lines about a quarter inch apart i do want them to go this way instead of across just because of all of these little border prints and i'm going to go totally crazy and i'm going to use orange thread because this is going to be on the outside and you're going to see some of it up here on the edges, but for the majority of it, it's going to be underneath and you're not gonna see it. So with my orange on the inside, I thought it'd be fun to add orange quilting lines on this just to hold it all and draw it together. When I do the quilting like this, I like to start somewhere in the center and work my way out. I'm just gonna go, oh look, here is, it's not necessarily the center, but I have these blue squares going here. So I'm just gonna start at one of them and I'm just gonna start quilting a quarter inch all the way. Now, if I decide because I'm using the bright orange that I don't wanna quilt through my buttons, I can go ahead and leave that section unquilted and then just continue on. It's totally up to you. Same thing with all these little scallops here. Maybe I don't wanna quilt straight through them. If I have to adjust it and it's not exactly a quarter inch, because if I do this blue line here, my quarter inch may or may not put me right into these scallops. So maybe I wanna do on either side of these blue squares, and then I wanna go ahead and skip down to this line here. It's totally up to me. I can do as I wish. We're just making a little fabric basket. It doesn't have to be exactly lined up. I can go ahead and make it a little free form. If my quilting lines come out a little uneven, it'll be okay. For the most part, I will be following right on these lines. Now I went ahead and I did put some spray starch on my fabric just to give it a little bit of body. I don't always starch my fabric unless I'm making a complicated quilt square. But since I just purchased a new can of spray starch, I thought, well, why not? Let's just go ahead and use it on this project. So as I said, I'm going to go ahead with about a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna leave my machine at the 2.0 so that my stitches are tighter together and it'll help make all my quilting a little bit more dense. gone ahead and added them all and you can see that there's some empty spaces here I decided not to interrupt my stripes I did do a stitch down the center of my little plaid area because there was a line I left my polka dots open I left my buttons open and I didn't go too close to my scallops I just went on either side and I'm just gonna go ahead and see how it is now you could also put some stabilizer on it or some interfacing because in this project those are really interchangeable and then add your batting you could put a couple layers of batting just to give it that extra bit of oomph to it or you can just go ahead and try if you use your not your favorite fabric if you want to have a purple flowered fabric to match your craft room maybe save that fabric for a second and test it out on some fun things because even though this may not be the perfect sturdy strength that you were looking for for your project it would still make a good use somewhere else in your house or your craft room or you can go ahead and give it away as a gift i like to test new projects out with some not my most favorite fabric not the one that i really want my finished project to be in just to make sure i understand how everything's going and i don't i don't do it with just batting and then be upset because it didn't come out right and then i don't have any more fabric now if you have yards of this fabric and we're only cutting out an eight inch square that's going to be perfectly fine it's not that big of a deal you'll have plenty extra to use right 
So now I'm going to go ahead and take this over to my cutting mat and I'm going to trim all the way around so that it matches up. If you started with a larger square, go ahead and trim it down to eight inches. Just kind of center it or off to the corner, depending on what type of fabric you're using. Because I'm pretty sure you guys aren't going to have the same fabric that I have. I have had this on hand for several years from Joann's. There's another look at the back. Now I like to give you guys the basic idea and how the construction of a project goes and then you guys can run with it and change it and adapt it to what you need, add a little creativity to it. If this size isn't going to work for you, go ahead and adjust the square you start with. Start with something larger or smaller. If you wanna just test it out, just start with the eight inch square. Everything in these projects are fully adjustable to whatever your needs may be. Now, if you've ever made a bag, a tote bag or anything similar, then you know about boxing your corners. I'm gonna go ahead and cut around all four corners. I'm gonna cut little squares out of both my outside and my inside. And we're gonna kind of construct this very similar to a bag. Now this is totally arbitrary. You can kind of do whatever you want based on the size of the square you cut out will be how far up your sides are going to go. Now when I pulled out my friends and measured hers, hers looks hers looks like she probably cut out maybe I, I, her size right now are inch and a half. So you do have a little bit of a seam allowance when you're stitching everything together and all. And it looks like maybe she cut hers. She could have probably cut hers out of a two inch square out of this corners if she chose that method to do this. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to cut a two inch square out. I'm going to line my little, I have a two and a half inch square here. So I'm going to line it up so that it's at the two inch mark. You can use any of the, your square rulers that you have, even if it's a 12 and a half inch one, just use that little itty bitty corner of it. You can use a standard ruler and just measure up two inches and over two inches and draw your lines if you don't happen to have a quilting ruler. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that in all four corners. Keep them all at the two inch mark. Now, as you see, I did it on my lining and on my regular fabric. I'm gonna take a nice pair of sharp scissors. It's really good if your point is nice and sharp. This one isn't, so if your point isn't sharp, all you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut slow. Oh, no, the point's not too bad. Now, I never do this with my square and my rotary cutter because when you're cutting the squares, you would you could, but you'd have to stop before you got to the corner because if you go to the corner, you're going to be nicking into the regular fabric. So I just always use a nice pair of scissors for this. And of course, I do save these squares for something else. They are, you know, a two inch square. I have a bin that I save all of the squares that I cut out of my purses or you know other projects that cut out a square like this and i save them for some type of a project that i'm going to use them for in the future and it's going to be the same process when we go ahead and cut it out of our quilted project you're going to do the same thing even if you've used some type of interfacing or stabilizer if you use some wool batting and then hit it really well with a nice hot steamy iron it'll go ahead and felt that a little bit and it'll compress it down and that will be a little bit sturdier i learned that making my fabric postcards And then you're going to have your two pieces that are cut out like this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay these down on top of each other. 
I'm gonna have them right sides together. This is a solid fabric, so there is no right or wrong. So whatever side you traced with your pen or whatever, your pencil, make that your back, your inside, your, your wrong side, so that if you have any bit of ink, for whatever reason, it's gonna be in the seam allowance, so we should be fine, but just in case we had a little bit of an oops and we marked our fabric somewhere, then we know that it won't show up in our final project. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave a little spot that we're gonna leave open for turning. And we're gonna only stitch on these plus sides over here. We're gonna leave these corners that we cut out. We're not gonna sew down in here at all. Cause when we're done, we're gonna put these together. And you see how when you stitch them together, that it goes ahead and it forms your sides like that. So we're gonna go ahead and leave them unstitched. We're gonna leave a little opening, just enough for us to get our couple fingers in so that we can pull it out. I am going to stitch around it at a quarter of an inch. If you feel like that is going to be a little bit too close to the edge and you can't quite follow it, you can go ahead and make your seam allowance a little bit wider. Your project is just gonna be a little bit smaller when you're done. Back stitch at the beginning and the end when you start and stop on these little sides here. When you're sewing here, because we're gonna stitch it together, I don't worry about starting and stopping, but if you want to, you can go ahead and do that. I don't cut my thread since it's just a small area here. I leave my needle down. I just pull it out a little bit and then I spin this next piece over. You can go ahead and add some pins or clips onto here if you'd like. You can put your pins on the inside so you don't have to remove them while you're sewing. And I just kind of move this over and this way I don't have to cut my thread. When you get over to this last one, if you're worried about stitching over, you can bring this up or you can just go ahead and just trim off of this thread here. And that's gonna allow that side to just go ahead and lay down nice and flat. So when you go to stitch it, you know you're gonna be in the right spot. And you're not gonna sew over anything you shouldn't. And remember, we're gonna leave an opening. You could put a couple pins there to remind yourself and then back stitch. I'm going to go ahead and just trim all of my threads. I did use a little bit of thread going from spot to spot, but you're gonna use much more if you start and stop and trim your threads every time. So that's not too much to be throwing away. I'm saving this for a future art project. So now I've stitched it just on the points of my little cross here. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and box our corners. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead into the corner and separate these two. I'm going to bring them together so that I have a straight line going across. And what I wanna do is I wanna have my seams to nest again. So I wanna have one going one way and one going the other. Since one side is quilted and one isn't, sometimes it just wants to stay together. And if that happens, then just go with it. But if you can, just try to get them to line up together. You could put a couple pins in it here if you'd like. going to add a quilt a clip to the batting side let me put one on the center here and what I want to end up doing is I just want to make sure that the two fabrics here are lined up and they're meeting together and I don't have them so that they're off balance at all I don't want to make sure I have my lining fabric with my lining and my outer fabric with my outer which is kind of the way you kind of have to do it because of way everything is lined up here I'm gonna go ahead and stitch with a quarter of an inch stitch uh, seam allowance again. I'm going to back stitch a couple times in the beginning and the end. And then we've gone ahead and we've sewn that one corner. So we're gonna repeat that on all four of them. 
Now this one, since it's already done, I've gone ahead and I've had this side, my seam allowance is going one way, so I'm gonna make sure when I'm on this side, it's gonna go in the opposite direction, just so that it lines up. So when I come over here, this one was going this way, so I wanna make sure this one's going this way, and then this side's going that side. And as you work your way around, they're all gonna go ahead and just lay down nicely and do what they're supposed to. Sometimes I'll just go ahead and clip there just to hold it all in place. Now while stitching these, I found that it was easier if I started at the batting side because you're using the extra thicknesses, you have your double thickness of batting, and when you're stitching here, you're gonna go down to just double thickness of cotton fabric here. So I found it easier to go down than I did to start at the fabric and work my way and go up. Now this really looks like a mess here. You could take this over to your iron if you want, and you can go ahead and set all of your seams here. It's not really all that important. It's something we do in quilting. Once we stitch down, we like to give it a good press so that our thread gets set down and nestles into the fabric instead of sitting on top. It's important when you're making quilt blocks, but it's not necessarily something that's important when you're sewing a bag. So go ahead and find that spot where you left it open for turning. I did leave mine a little bit small, but that's okay. I'll just go ahead and use my hemostats and I'll use them and grab the section over here where I can still grab onto some batting so that I'm not just pulling on my fabric. I, I tell you guys all the time, I try not to pull straight on the fabric because I have torn it before, put a hole in it. We back tacked here so that when we're pulling this through, we don't tear any of those stitches. If they tear, it's okay. We're going to fix it when we top stitch around everything. If you left a little bit of a larger hole, you won't struggle as much as I did. And if you left your smaller, you can see it works. We just have to finesse it out a little bit. I'm putting my nail underneath, my thumbnail underneath the section of fabric that I'm pulling on just to help glide it down. I can poke it through with my fingers. You just, whatever you're doing, you just wanna make sure you're not gonna put a hole in your fabric anywhere because then you gotta start all over again. All right. So here I've got it all straightened out. I'm gonna use something with a blunt tip, my crochet hook, just to pop out the corner, specifically on my outer fabric, cause that's the one that's going to be sitting in this direction. Our lining is gonna go inside it. So I just bring it around, maybe run it along that seam just to make sure everything is where it needs to be. Then you just pop the lining in and you can already see that it's forming, right? And we're gonna make sure we're gonna tuck our little hole here. So make sure all those raw edges are tucked in nice and neat. Put a couple pins in it, put a clip in it. When we go around and we top stitch this, we wanna make sure everything's down there nice and neat. Now you can go ahead and take this over to your iron and you can go ahead and give everything a nice iron. Remove your clip or pins, of course, so you get a nice crease on that. I just like to lay it down like this, or you can turn it inside out so that you know that when you're pressing here, if this fabric goes over, it's gonna go to the inside and it won't have any of that lining showing. Now, when I'm pressing, my main concern is just to make sure I have this spot where I'm gonna go ahead and seal up my hole that it's all nice and neat there. The rest will go ahead and fold down as I stitch around it anyway. Now you can go ahead and stitch it this way. You can flip it inside out. So depending on what color thread, I have orange in both my top and my bobbin. So if you have various colors in and depending on where you want it, you can always turn it inside out so that if your bobbin's a different color, if you chose orange and white, you can go ahead and stitch it this way. Either way works. You're just gonna go ahead and top stitch at about an eighth of an inch from the edge. I'm sticking with my 2.0 stitch length. I'm gonna start just before my hole, just so I know that I've got it done and out of the way and I don't have to worry about where it is later on.
Let me turn it back the right way. There we go. So it looks like maybe she didn't go at two inches. She might have went an inch and a half. That was my first thought, but then I thought, well, I don't know. Let's include seam allowance and such. But I forgot that we don't need a seam allowance here. We only needed the one up there. So I could have went with maybe one and three quarters. But I do have a nice little basket. Now you see how the top gets a little bit rounded looking? You could take this over to your iron and just fold your corners and give them a nice steamy press. When I take it over to press it, I just make sure that the top two pieces here line up and then I press the corner and I don't touch the bottom at all. So now I can take it over and I can find where my bottom edge is gonna be. And I can just tuck in this side and take my iron in like this or along here and give it a nice press. If you have one of those little palm held irons, this is a good spot to use it on. Now that's already starting to make it look more and more box like. Now there's one more thing we can do. We can go ahead and take our corners here, just like I did in this one. It's a little hard to see on the darker fabric, but I folded it and I just took a little top stitch about an eighth of an inch, just along here on the corner from the bottom, from the top to the bottom, the bottom to the top. I just didn't make sure I did not go past. It's another good reason to go ahead and press your sides so that you can see exactly where your bottom is. So I'm gonna take this over, I'm gonna fold it. You're gonna have a little extra because of the batting in this top corner. I'm just gonna fold it a little bit. I'm gonna back tack a couple of times, maybe three or four times here, and then I'm just gonna stitch down. Now you can just do it right here, and that would give you something more similar to this. You can take it and really give it a good, like that one was doing where they had them, you know, all the way sticking out more so you can give it a bigger of an angle. But we're just going to take these in an eighth of an inch down and we're just going to top stitch down there and see what it looks like. I like it just like this. I am fine with it this way. My sides stay up nicely and all. But let's just see what happens if we do a little bit more. It's just fabric. A little bit of batting, a little bit of thread. We can go ahead and test it out. If we don't like it, we know not to do it on our special favorite fabric. We can give this to the kids and let them have it for their room and play with it. I'd go very slow. If your machine can't handle all that extra bulk up at the top section, maybe start down about an eighth or a quarter of an inch below that, maybe where your stitching is, and then just stitch below it, and it'll be perfectly fine. Well, I'm... It's just the side of it, just to give it a little sturdiness so you don't need to worry about too much. I, I'm pretty much sure it'll be perfectly fine. This was a little bit tough at the top up there, so I am just going to go ahead and stick with just starting at my little top stitching line right there, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start there. I think I'm gonna try this one by starting at the bottom, and I'll have less bulk to, st bulk to start there, so maybe my machine will be happier. Now this machine can handle a lot of bulk, but since I'm right at the edge, it, the teeth of the feed dogs here, they don't really have that much to dig into. So definitely starting at the bottom made it a whole lot easier to go ahead and get it to where I wanted it. And as I came right up off the edge, I didn't have any problems at all. So it's much easier. So if you're struggling it with it in one direction, go ahead and turn it around and try it the other way. Now you know your sewing machine, you know what it struggles with and what it doesn't. If this is going to be too much for it right here, just go ahead and go over a quarter of an inch. You don't have to do it right at the eighth of an inch top stitching. You can go ahead and move it over a little bit or not do it at all. 
You can take it up and just put a little couple of stitches at the top by hand. So there we go, now we've made a little box. So now I've got a baby box to go with my big box. Maybe you don't have as many of the little clips to put in like I do. Or maybe you have a lot and you wanna put them in a couple little stations all around your area based on whatever craft you're working on. So putting those stitches down the side, it just really squares it off and makes sure it's gonna stay square like that. When I'm making new projects like this and I'm just kind of winging it from my knowledge of making other projects, I do really like to just use other fabric. It may be a fabric I really enjoy, but it might not be the fabric that I want for my finished project. And I just really like giving it that little bit extra. Just try it out with that so that I can see what I need to change and what I need to, I can leave the same. As I've seen, it is the wrong size now. So if I really wanted it to fit a pin cushion of a certain size that I already own, I would be in trouble, right? Now afterwards, you can just figure out what this measurement is. Go ahead and measure it. Add in your seam allowances and you can make a pin cushion to match. I can make my pin cushion a little bit deeper so that it goes ahead and sits in there. I know this one is already gonna fit in there. And with these corners that are tucked in a little bit, it just holds that pin cushion in there nicely. I'm not gonna dump out my clips again. I made a lot of noise already today but these corners just hold it in nicely. So whether you're going to make it this size and you have some nice sturdy stabilizer, you wanna go ahead and quilt it, or you just wanna make a rectangle and make it with just whatever stabilizer interfacing you happen to have on hand, go ahead and give this a try. There'll be nice little gifts to use holiday fabrics. You could put candies in it for Halloween or Easter, even Christmas. Make a little gifts that you can use these for Advent boxes at Christmas time. There's just so many things you can do and such creativity you can use with this. Test out those fancy stitches you have on your machines. These are great projects for doing those things so you can just see how they stitch out. Even though you may not like it, may never use it again, if it's on one of these little baskets, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. And if it really bothers you, just go ahead and give it to your, to your mother, your mother-in-law, your kids, your friends and family members. They're not gonna care if your stitches are a little wonky or if the hearts were too small or too big. They're not gonna notice at all. They're just gonna think it's really great. And if you're worried about the way your basket looks, throw some candy in it and they'll never even see the basket. They'll be too busy looking at the candy. So thanks for hanging out with me while I made some fabric trays, fabric bins, fabric baskets. I hope you make some and I'll see you guys later. Bye.